the time has come, friends. Today we talk about the Yesu FT3. First, thanks so much for watching. This is Josh, KI6NAZ of the Ham Radio Crash Course. If you have not already, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Now, the, <laughs> the Yaesu FT3 is an incremental update from the Yaesu FT2DR, and it feels like an incremental upgrade. If you have not already, this review is going to highly leverage what I have said already about the FT2DR. So if you have not, please go watch that video because many of the features that are in this radio are also in the FT2. Now, before I get too far into this, I want to say a big shout out to the Wyoming ham for letting me borrow this radio. Without him, this would not be possible. So thank you for letting me have it for what's well, been a couple weeks now. I really need to get this in a box to you, but thank you so much for letting me go through this. Now, because I have already made, I believe, about three videos on the FT2, including a review, I won't go into a lot of the features that exist between both radios and try to focus on what's different and what's better, really, with the FT3. I have not changed my opinion, so right up front, we're going to break the uh, review uh, template here. I have not changed my opinion. I think this is a good radio to buy if you are in the market for a top-of-the-line radio. I'll talk a little bit more about the price point as we go along, but um, I still view it as totally acceptable and a totally good radio to buy. So I'll briefly, really quickly cover the high points. This is a dual-band transmitting radio. It has wideband receive and it is dual receivers with the ability to have the first receiver act as a dual receiver, if you will. So you basically can listen to broadcast radio while also listening to repeater and have your B channel working APRS. This is still an APRS radio. It's still GPS enabled. You gain all of the same features you had but with the addition of many new interesting features. And let's talk about those right now. So right out of the gate, the new things on the FT3 are that color screen, that touch color screen that people ask for. When I made the FT2 review, I got so many comments from people that just said, why can't you put a color screen in it? Why can't you put another screen in it? They have, and it's glorious. Also, this FT3 is Bluetooth enabled, which was another comment that people said hey, why don't they add Bluetooth? And while I don't really care about Bluetooth on a radio, I did do a live stream covering a lot of the new features. And so if you want to see a deep dive on any of those features and taking questions that ask more specific things about the FT3, check that out as well. With that said, the Bluetooth sounds fantastic. It paired with my UE Boom and sounds great. I paired it with my... Um, earbud things for Bluetooth, that also sounded good, and this syncs with my car. So right out of the gate, whatever Bluetooth they're using, the technology there is like one that you would use in a cell phone, and it sounds really good. So nicely done, Yesu. Now, this is a, we're going to go through a lot of personal things, right? Personal things that, that I like that you may not. I'm coming from a bit of like an MCOM kind of interest, and I think that this scratches a lot of MCOM interests. It still has that touchscreen that can be used with gloves. It has a very long battery life. Now, the ergonomics are slightly different. It is a fatter radio that is shorter. It has a PTT on the right on the left side, or however you look at it. The PTT button and that button cluster is the same as the FT2, but it features what I would call an FT70 look. There's more of a wedge here. And for that, I am a big fan. I like that much more than the FT2, and I think that is a, a really good way to go. This is totally a, a touchy-feely thing, not a feature really other than a tactile one that you may or may not care about. Walking around the radio, the little flappy doors are different than in the FT2. You now have two separate rubber doors which allow you to have some open and some closed while you're using the radio, and the way that they're lined up is going to be less wear and tear on those little rubber grommets. I think that was a good move. One of the new features is the recording can now happen to the SD card. The FT2 also has an SD card, but with the FT3, you can record and record both sides of a QSO, which if you're running a net or you're doing something MCOM related, you can get both your outbound transmissions and the incoming transmissions. So 
Very nicely done on that. That is superb. That's a feature that I absolutely love on the 7300. Other radios have it, and I'm glad that they brought that here. Obviously, 7300 being ICOM, this being Yesu, but you get the idea. It's been mentioned many times, but because this is an incremental upgrade, all the accessories match for the FT2. And in fact, the battery that is in the FT1, the slimline, low milliamp hour battery, will clip right into this guy. And in fact, Bob was telling me at the HRO that um, he really likes the old battery because it doesn't have this hump. So it's just a really flat, thin-bodied radio. And he can just throw that in his pocket, and it's really, really slim, which I think is pretty cool. Now, something that the FT3 has is the cam feature, which I covered in the live stream, but I'll mention it briefly. It allows you to monitor three memory locations, I'm sorry, five memory locations at any one time, and it will kind of keep an eye on what the high point is of the, la the latest transmission. So you get an idea of what is active. And briefly what this is for is if you were at an MCOM event and maybe there was two simplex channels and a repeater and everybody's supposed to be on simplex one, but you keep seeing activity on the other frequencies. If you were a coordinator, you could hop over to those frequencies and remind people, hey, we're on simplex one or two or whatever. And just remind people and organize what's going on. So you can see one quick blast of information without having to switch around and take yourself out of what's actively going on or move between A channel and B channel. You can just see it all in one shot. Now, one of the biggest things that people are excited about, and it really this is just a software update, is you get full text memory uh, names for your memory channels, which should have been in the FT2, but hey, we got to say good on you for getting that in there. And it works great. And it looks great. The screen is smaller than the FT2, but it is extremely vibrant and really nice looking. In daylight, it can get a little washed out in comparison to the FT2. And there's not a lot of adjustment in that area for contrast, but it is still acceptable and workable. So by and large, it's everything you liked and I liked about the FT2 in an upgraded platform with a bit of aesthetic choices on the exterior case that I like. And there, therefore, it's, it's still a buy in my eyes. Now, there are two downsides to this radio that I've found. Uh, the one, which is a little ridiculous, is that uh, fatter antennas, like on the Abri, if it's got a big bezel on the outside, the way that this radio is laid out, because you have this GPS hump, that's how they were able to actually shrink the vertical sizes. They left a hump here. With the FT2, it's, it's a flat deck on top, and that allows a wide base antenna to sit flush against the little grommety thing on the side. You can't do that with the FT3. And in fact, antennas such as the Abri, this is the wrong one, but you get the idea. The Abri uh, with this fatter outer piece will not sit flush. So just be warned when you go in to get this. If you're really in love with Abri antennas, uh, you may need to think about a different antenna. Might I recommend Diamonds or the Signal Stick? Very highly rated, very well recommended antenna. Now, the other thing that's staring everybody in the face is the price. The price is uh, the price of kind of what the FT2 was when it came out, but this is an incremental upgrade to the FT2, so it feels like your money is going further. I still think this is a buy for those of you that are interested in stepping up from a beginner radio into something that's going to be more of a performer with many more features, or if you're interested in a more outdoor-centric radio, something that's going to be good for doing soda activations and outdoor work, this is a very good radio for that particular choice. I, I did get a lot of messages uh, from people that were like, hey, should I feel bad that I bought an FT2 three months ago? Or I'm a little upset with you because you made that review and then they came out with the FT3. Uh, first, I didn't know that uh, Yesu was coming out with an upgrade. When I started to find out about it at the same time everybody else did around Hemvention, I was excited because I think the feature set was, again, a nice little bump. And a lot of the things we heard from John Crook, by the way, go follow them on Facebook. They're the Yesu official uh, Facebook page. I think it's for Wired. X, JSU System Fusion, but anyway, I uh, I still think the FT2 is a great radio. Nothing from my review is taken away by this radio. This is a good radio too, a great radio, but it doesn't take anything away from the FT2, which for its price is still a great buy. 
and eventually the price of the FT3 will come down, but that's not necessarily something that a lot of people will want to wait for. So, if you think about it, the Yesu lineup of HTs is one of the best ones on the market at many different price points. We did a deep dive on Yesu radios. We talked a little bit about what the FT3 might be, uh, and that was covered a bit in the talk. But when you think about it, the FT2 at its price point, the FT70 at its price point, and the, and the FT3, and you still have the FT60 and many of those other little quirkier radios, there's still AHT for everyone in the Yesu lineup, which is awesome. So it's still a good radio if you bought it at its discounted sale price. I think you, you made a good buy. So there's nothing to worry about there. Enjoy the radio. I do. I still do. And I don't even know that I'm going to get an FT3 at this point yet. We'll see what happens. Anyway, that is my opinion and feelings, kind of a review on the new FT3 by Yesu. I still think it's a, a solid buy for those of you that are that have that money to spend on a quality radio, particularly those people that are going to be going outdoors. It's solid. I continue to test the battery life. I've actually put the FT2 battery in the FT3 and the FT3 is still doing better than the FT2. So I'm very impressed. Of course, this is with uh, Bluetooth turned off. I'm still very impressed by what Yesu did with the power consumption on this radio. Fantastic work, Yesu. Good incremental move, and great that you stuck with the accessories that are already on board the radio. What? So that will do it. You tell me what you think in the comments on the FT3. Did you buy an FT2 a couple months ago? Do you feel bad? Are you going to sell it? Uh, Bob sold his for $250 and bought the FT3, so he uh, recouped some of his money there, which, hey, maybe is a good mood for some of you. Anyway, I am Josh KI6NAZ. If you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I live stream every Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and we try to cover many different topics. If you'd like to add to the topics that we talk about, please join the Discord. There is an ongoing uh, discussion slash poll on what we should uh, talk about in the future on the live streams. And of course, we have the Patreon where people can actually pick and vote on what I'm going to talk about. A bunch of other perks are there as well. So I do hope you check that out. All the links should be in the description for what I've talked about today. And again, I am Josh KI6NAZ. Thank you so much for watching. See ya. And I do want to be give 